Hello, and welcome to Chagpar MD. I'm Dr. Anise Chagpar. September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Prostate cancer, one of the leading malignancies affecting men in the United States. But what exactly is prostate cancer? And who gets it? What are the risk factors? Can your diet affect whether or not you get prostate cancer? How can you prevent yourself from getting prostate cancer? Well, I know that these are questions on the minds of so many men. So I thought this week we would start to look at prostate cancer. So what do you say? Let's get started. Now, as many of you know, prostate cancer is the leading malignancy affecting men short of skin cancer, which we talked about a few weeks ago. And I'll leave you that link here. But when we take out skin cancer, which seems to be pretty ubiquitous, prostate cancer is the most common cancer affecting men and the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths. So what do you need to know in terms of prostate cancer? There's a whole slew of information, everything from where is the prostate? What does it do? How do I know if I've got prostate cancer? What are the signs and symptoms? What can I do to reduce my risk? And what are the data? So let's dig in. First, what's the prostate? The prostate is this walnut-sized gland that sits right below the bladder and surrounds the urethra. Um, and what happens is that the prostate gland really makes prostatic fluid, and that fluid nourishes and protects sperm. So during ejaculation, what happens is the prostate gland squeezes that fluid into the urethra, um, and that combines with uh, the semen that comes from the seminal vesicles and is excreted. Getting cancer in that gland, that's prostate cancer. So as we talked about, it's the most common cancer occurring in men and the second leading causes of cancer-related deaths. So this year, 2020, over 191,000 men will be diagnosed and 33,000 men will die from it. Now, the good news is that about 90% of all prostate cancers are found at a local or regional stage. That means that it's pretty localized when it's first found, such that the five-year survival is close to 100%. Now, the five-year survival, if the cancer has spread beyond the prostate and that immediate area and has gone to a distant site, well, five-year survival for distant stage disease is more like 31%. And if we take all stages combined, because the majority of them occur at an early stage, 10-year survival for all stages combined is still about 98%. That's great news. But still, we want to know who gets prostate cancer. Well, there are a few things that put you at increased risk. First, increasing age. So more than 60% of all prostate cancers occur in men older than age 65. It's about 60% higher in black men than whites, so particularly people who are African American or of Caribbean descent um, are at higher risk. Your family history also puts you at risk. So family history accounts for about 20% of prostate cancer, a little bit more if you have a family history of men who are getting prostate cancer early under the age of 65. The genetic link, however, is about 5 to 10% of prostate cancers. So the difference here is whether we know of a genetic mutation that puts you at increased risk. So certainly if you have a family history of Lynch syndrome or of BRCA1 and 2, you are at increased risk of prostate cancer. Now I know what you might be thinking. BRCA1 and 2, I thought that that was a breast and ovarian cancer gene. Well, it is. But for men who also carry that gene uh, and that genetic mutation, that puts them at increased risk of prostate cancer. So if you come from a family that has a BRCA gene mutation and you're a man, you should be thinking not only about male breast cancer, but also about prostate cancer 
and pancreatic cancer as it turns out, but that's for another video. Other factors that put you at increased risk. If you were exposed to Agent Orange in the past, that puts you at increased risk of prostate cancer. And certainly smoking and obesity significantly increase your risk of prostate cancer. Not just getting it, but dying of it. One of the questions that I often get asked is, what can I do? Is Can I eat a particular thing or not eat a particular thing? What are the things within my control? So does your diet affect risk? And the data here are rather soft. I've left you a link to a really good review article that covers a lot of this data, but just to go through some things uh, in general. We find that diets that are higher in fat, especially animal fat, increase risk. Some studies have found an association with high fat dairy um, and calcium, processed red meat. Um, there are some data with regards to eggs and choline and selenium, although these data are rather mixed and quite inconsistent. In terms of what can decrease your risk, fruits, vegetables, legumes, Decent amount of data on tomatoes uh, with the element being lycopene, the fact that increased lycopene may actually decrease your prostate cancer risk. Less data on fish, coffee, tea, and soy. So in all of these, the data are really inconsistent. Where are the data consistent? One thing for sure, in terms of obesity, we know that people, especially if they have truncal obesity, that visceral obesity, um, where you carry your fat around your midsection, and we talked about this in the video on body distribution, I'll leave you a link here, that if you have a five centimeter higher waist circumference, that is associated with a 1.06 fold higher risk of having advanced prostate cancer. There was a meta-analysis that found that for every five kilograms per meter square, you increase your body mass index, you increased your prostate-specific mortality by 20%. So we have seen that obesity is a major problem in terms of many different malignancies, as well as heart disease and other factors as well. So really something to concentrate on. Tied in with that, we know that physical activity in and of itself was really important in terms of prostate cancer mortality. One study found that people who did three or more hours a week of vigorous activity had a 61% lower risk of dying from prostate cancer than those who did less than one hour a week. Not to mention that physical activity is good for all kinds of things limiting your obesity, heart disease, other forms of cancer, and so on. Next, the data are really consistent on smoking. There was a study of over 5,000 men with prostate cancer who were followed for 22 years. This is one of the largest studies to date that found that people who were smoking prior to the diagnosis of of prostate cancer had a 61% increased risk of prostate cancer mortality. So the long and short of these data are, really you need to take care of your overall health. Don't smoke, get enough exercise, and try to stay within an ideal body weight. So what are the signs and symptoms of prostate cancer? How can you get an inkling of whether or not this is a disease that's affecting you? Well, remember that mo the most number of prostate cancers are found at a local stage, local or regional. And the symptoms at that point are really these. Frequent urination, waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, having a weak or interrupted urine flow, needing to really strain to empty your bladder, um, having blood in the urine or in the seminal fluid. If you have new onset erectile dysfunction, you had no problem before, but now you do, or if you have pain or burning when urinating that doesn't go away, these are all things that you should really go and see your doctor about. When you start getting symptoms like these, bone pain, swelling in your legs or feet, 
unexpected weight loss, fatigue, changes in your bowel habit. Again, these are things that are pretty worrisome and you want to be talking to your doctor because they can be the first signs and symptoms of metastatic disease, prostate cancer that is spread outside that basic region of the prostate. And remember that when prostate cancer has spread, that five-year mortality goes down to about 31%, whereas it was about 100% before. So prostate cancer is incredibly common, and we've covered some of the basics, but there's a lot more to know about prostate cancer. So what about screening? Should you get screened or not get screened? Should you get screened with a PSA blood test? What about digital rectal exams? There has been all kinds of controversy about when to get screened, whether to get screened, and how to follow up. We're going to be covering that coming up, so please stay tuned. And we'll try to cover even more topics with regards to prostate cancer as well, in terms of its grade and stage and advances in treatment. I'm really trying to provide you as much data as I can in an evidence-based way to really promote your health and wellness. If you find these videos helpful, please like and share them. Please subscribe and hit the notify button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and what topics you want covered and I will try to comply. I hope that you found this video helpful. Remember, no, September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. I hope all of you get a little bit of awareness from these videos. And until next week, this is Dr. Anise Chagpar wishing you all a safe and healthy week.